Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Professor Hill, and this is another short video for our class, Ethics, Philosophy 2306, here at St. Philip's College. Today is Thursday, the 22nd of February, 2018, and uh, we're in week six, looking at chapter six of our textbook, Doing Ethics by Louis Vaughn. And I just want to make a couple of comments today about the second of the two big non-consequentialist theories that he's talking about in this chapter which is natural law theory. Um, and then see if you guys have got any questions in terms of how this gets applied to our case study, which will be due Sunday night. So look, let me just start with this definition right out of the textbook on natural law. He says, natural law theory is a theory asserting that the morally right action is the one that follows the dictates of nature. Now he talks at length about this in chapter six. And he says, the theory is based upon nature, uh, finding things existing in or caused by nature, naturally occurring things that are not made or caused by human beings. And that according to the natural law theorists, and he mentions explicitly Thomas Aquinas, that we can deduce from nature the things that we are supposed to do because what he says uh, several times when he's talking about this is precisely this kind of maxim that says that how nature is reveals how it should be. The goals to which nature inclines reveal the values that we should embrace and the moral purposes to which we should aspire. And I guess you could kind of see how this comes about, which is people say, well, look, here's the good in the world. And a lot of this, he mentions Thomas Aquinas, so Roman Catholic doctor of the church. He was a priest and philosopher and theologian and who was living in the 13th century. And he believed that the world was created by God and that it was good, and that in order to figure out how we should act in this world, we needed to understand nature, God's intent and design and purpose was behind this, both in the world around us and in human nature. And that we have a human nature, and if we just listen to ourselves and observe the na natural world around us, we can deduce what we should do. Now, I have to tell you, he talks in the book at length about, he kind of lays out the natural law theory, and then he has this kind of interesting section about evaluating the theory. And to his credit, he really raises a lot of the big challenges to natural law theory. And he talks about, well, how do we how do we know this? We, you know, we're saying we can deduce this, but how do we know that we're doing this properly? How do we know we're not making the wrong assumptions about what we're observing? Uh, and beyond that, he also begins to get into some of the limits of the moral theory, the natural law theory, because he says, listen, the theory itself is very absolutist. And it's not that he's saying, oh, that's a danger. Don't apply it in an absolute way. He's saying the people that are out there who believe in natural law, Immanuel Kant, Thomas Aquinas, they're saying, no, this, this is an absolute guideline for us. These, we have morals and principles that we can deduce and that do indeed apply absolutely. And he mentions several examples. And I have to tell you, um, it's kind of odd because he says, look, these are some of the big problems like, you know, you apply this to uh, to procreation, and what you get is up. Oh, there can be never, there can be no interference with procreation. So all contraception would go out the window. Um, 
he talks about homosexuals. He's like, oh, no, no, that also naturally flows from our understanding. All of that goes out the window. It's all immoral. It's all completely morally unacceptable. And what's striking about the chapter, though, is he lays these kind of challenges out. He lays the theory out, lays out the challenges. And he starts to say, look, one of the big problems, again, is at the end of the challenges. He says natural law theory seems to falter because, as mentioned, discovering what values are inscribed in nature is problematic. The kind of moral principles that we might extract from nature depends on our conception of nature. And such conceptions ask some pretty hard-hitting questions. He says, historically, humans have shown a capacity for both great good and monstrous evil. Which inclination is the true one? And even if we could accurately identify human inclinations, there seems to be no reliable procedure for uncovering the corresponding moral values or telling whether moral principles should be absolutist. He's like, yeah, we're, you're trying to do a whole lot with this moral theory. Say that there's nature, say that we can understand exactly what it means and it's trying to tell us, and then we can write down all these principles. And we're so rock solid about them, we know for sure that they apply absolutely. Well, he, he kind of raises all these problems, makes this really kind of stinging critique, and then ends the chapter by saying, this is the right one. <laughs> there's, this, there's this huge flip there at the very end. In fact, he just goes straight from those that critique of it to saying literally, like in the next sentence, literally, like Kantian ethics, natural law theory is universalist, objectivist, and rational, applying to all persons and requiring that moral choices be backed up by good reasons. And he starts to lay out exactly why this is the proper moral theory. And he really doubles down on that at the very end of the chapter and just the summary. He just, he wants you to know that, no, this is the right one. He says, natural law theory is based on the notion that right actions are those that accord with natural law, the moral principles embedded in nature itself. How nature is reveals how it should be. And that's just kind of striking because in the, the last page, he was lying out, you know, laying out all these examples of where this goes off the rails and how there might be times when we interfere with the natural way of doing things in ways which we think are improvements to our health and our safety and the quality of our lives. And he wants to back up and say, oh, no, 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 those would be morally impermissible. So, listen. I, I think Louis Vaughn does a nice job of laying out a natural law theory. He does a good job of talking about Immanuel Kant. He does about Thomas Aquinas. And he does, I think, a fair job to them and their, their philosophies and their moral theories. He then raises some powerful questions, some big, serious challenges. Uh, and he says, listen, especially when you get to be this aspect of applying them, he says here, like Kant's theory, traditional natural law theory is absolutist, maintaining that some actions are always wrong. These immoral actions include direct killing of the innocent, interfering with procreation, lying. I mean, he, he goes on to talk about how they themselves, the philosophers, Kant and Thomas, would say, oh, no, absolutely. We figured this out. We use nature. It's completely objective, universalist, rational. That's how we can deduce these things. That's how you know these things are wrong. Here are the rules and principles. Apply them. And it's just kind of odd because he, he, he talks about all the problems with doing that, with that theory, and then turns around and just flat endorses it at the end of the chapter. Um, I'd said earlier in one of my previous videos that, you know, don't forget, he's not just trying to teach you about these particular theories, he's selling them. And here, at least, he becomes real upfront about that. Here, he's like, 
Oh yeah, no, we got the right one here. So, you know, pay attention now. This is the right one. So I want you to, to read through this chapter. Like I said, I think he does a fair and, you know, honest portrayal of what Kant and Thomas say. But then look at the challenges he raises and think to yourself, are these really problems? Should I rethink this? Or do you think they adequately deal with the challenges he raises? These are things that we have to sort out as students, as, as people trying to understand what moral theories are out there and how they can help us. So see if it makes sense. And again, one good way to always do that is to apply it to real life situations, apply it to case studies. So start thinking ahead to Sunday. And again, our case study that's coming up now. And think about, does natural law, does natural law theory help me grapple with this particular case study? How does it apply? How does it not apply? I'll wrestle with that a bit. And uh, I'll plan to see you guys tomorrow, the 23rd. For now, take care. Bye-bye.